Hey everybody, thanks for joining me at the Funhouse. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to show you how to make a nearly perfect pork roll egg and cheese sandwich. And the reason I say nearly perfect is because if it were going to be perfect, I would have tailored ham. But I don't have tailored ham. I've got the ShopRite tangy pork roll. Uh, it's very good. It's delicious. They are not a sponsor. But I do like Taylor ham better. That comes in like a loaf or a roll that you have to slice. Also, a um, aged New York cheddar would really put it over the top. Um, I've got the block cheese that I can slice up, but this is just easier, so I'm going to go with this. So you'll need uh, your favorite cheese. I like cheddar. Pork roll. In my opinion, got to be on an English muffin. Got to cook the eggs in butter. Um, if you're in a rush, you need two pans, but if you're not in a rush, one pan will do. And I like mine with two eggs. And uh, let's get started. I'm going to start by prepping things as much as I can. I'm going to take what's left and put it in a Ziploc bag. You can cook it all up at once and then reheat it um, throughout the week as you use it. But it just tastes better freshly cooked. When you cook it, cool it, and reheat it, uh, something just doesn't taste quite as good as it did on the first day. So I do not recommend doing that. I'm going to throw this in the fridge and we'll show you the next step. So for those of you not familiar with pork roll, let me give you a little history lesson. Um, imagine if bacon and sausage had a baby. A delicious, salty, smoky, savory baby in your mouth. That's pork roll. There is several other kinds. There is case pork roll, which is okay. Uh, Trenton or Trent pork roll. No, Trenton pork roll, which is, I think, ghastly. It's got globules of fat, like a gelatin in it. I can't handle that. Uh, like I said, tailored ham, which some will argue is just tailored ham, not pork roll, uh, in my opinion, is the best. This tangy pork roll is a close second. Um, some people think it's like fried bologna. It's not bologna. It's way better than bologna. And um, it will dome like bologna, even though it's not bologna. So I don't know if you ever fried bologna or fried Lebanon bologna. But um, just like that, it'll dome up and it won't cook right. It'll burn around the edges and be raw in the middle. So we cut these reliefs in thirds around the perimeter. You will always see pork roll in New Jersey. It's a Jersey delicacy with the three cuts in it to make it lay flat. And it just cooks better that way. As that is heating up. I shut off the dishwasher so it wouldn't make noise, and it's making noise to remind me that I shut it off. So, <laughs> please pardon the beeps. Um, I'm going to let that get going. I'm on an electric stove. I got this on about a 5. I'll turn it a little higher until it starts to sizzle, but then I'll drop it down to 5. It goes from 1 to 10, and I'll probably cook my eggs on about a 3. Now, personally, I like my eggs scrambled. Um, here's how I scramble it. I don't know why, but this is just the way I like to do it. And Martha Stewart taught me. Oh, okay. The pork will starting to sizzle, so I'm going to go down to five. They, she taught me that eggs are water-based and not fat or oil-based. So a lot of people would use milk to make their eggs fluffier or spread them further. She said, just use water. I've been doing that and I've had great results. So I'm just using some filtered water. I'm going to get these nice and scrambled up. And then that's it. It's just going to sit on the side until just about the last minute. And then I'll dump it in the pan and, you know, eggs cook up pretty quick. Uh, once again, in an effort to save time, I'm going to split my English muffin. Yeah, they say fork split. Well, I've had mixed results that way. I always get a good result with the butter knife. And I'm just going to take these and I'm going to throw them in the toaster. 
I got the toaster turned all the way to low and I'm gonna run it through a cycle that way later on I can just uh, cycle it through again and actually get it to toasty because it's gonna come out this first cycle on my toaster more or less raw maybe just a hint of crispiness to it but it will not be toasted but it'll be part way there now I like two slices of cheese and again just as a time saver I'm gonna dig out and leave prepared one two slices and I'll set that aside and now it's ready to go for later all right my English muffin just popped you can see there's no sign of brown yet it's just starting to get a little crispy I'll leave it sitting in there we'll see how the pork rolls doing I'm still getting a little bit of a dome in the middle should be browning up oh yeah now this is kind of thick so maybe I should have had my heat a little lower I'm going to put my heat at a 4, and I'm going to turn this so that the undercooked part is towards the middle where the greatest heat source is. And we're just going to let that keep cooking. I don't usually like to press things that presses the juice out. Any decent chef, which I am not, I confess, but any decent chef will say you're pushing the flavor out. But pork roll is a little bit on the greasy side. There's a lot of fat content in there. So I don't think I'm hurting it by doing that. And uh, in diners and whatnot, they do put weights on it, kind of like they do with bacon strips. As you can see, I didn't grease the pan. It greases itself. And we're just going to let this pork roll continue to sizzle while I've got everything ready to go. Um, we are not in a big rush because, like I said, the pork roll is buying me plenty of time. But maybe in an effort to save time... What I will do is I'll get my pan just a little bit warm and I'll melt the butter around it. But um, I basically want to have a cool pan to dump my eggs in so that they don't scorch and I don't scorch the butter. I could be doing this wrong. I told you I'm no chef. This is just how I do it. You can tell me in the comments what an idiot I am. Alright, hopefully you can hear the beautiful sound of the sizzling pork roll. And you don't hear the sound of the air conditioner or the dishwasher. But it's making this lovely sizzle. The smell is heavenly. Ambrosial, if you will. And um, let me just get back into it in case you didn't know. So pork roll is a, a New Jersey treat. Um, years ago, I would talk to people. No one had ever heard of it. Nobody knew what it was. Um, it is gaining popularity mostly because New Jersey is becoming increasingly expensive and terrible. And people from New Jersey are fleeing to other states and taking their love of pork roll with them. Uh, I hear that they are starting to carry pork roll in some other states' supermarkets. I'm spreading the butter over here where you can't see. Um, I also hear that a lot of your specialty markets will order it for you. Um, it's a smoked product. It keeps very well for a very long time. And aside from keeping in the package, after you cook it, it keeps for a pretty good while. Obviously, be careful, though, you know. Don't give yourself food poisoning. It's a pork-based product, so uh, I cook it. Um, I try to make sure I get the germs cooked out of it, you know what I mean? A lot of smoked products come to you nearly fully cooked just from the smoking process. But I would not eat uncooked pork roll. Alright, my butter is spread. I'm turning the heat off. Taking the pan off there. And I'm just going to keep an eye on my pork roll. And when my pork roll is done, I'll put it on a paper towel to soak up the grease. And uh, then I'll throw my eggs on. Normally I don't 
recommend molesting your food. Let it cook on one side to completion, flip it, let it cook on the other side to completion, you're done. But this pork roll is so thick. And I had my heat too high. So now I'm on four and I'm just trying to uh, cook the germs out. That's how I order my steak. Just cook it till the germs are gone. Cook it till you kill the germs, is what I tell them. I'd run up to a cow and take a bite if it wasn't inhumane and if I wouldn't catch worms. Okay, that is still looking mighty undercooked. Uh, careful about cross-contamination too. I did use this spatula to spread the butter, um, but this pork roll is cooking, the eggs are going to cook, and um, I don't know, maybe I'll let the spatula heat up on the pan and kill the germs. Probably I should use two separate spatulas, but I mean, I'm going to use a spatula to take this stuff off the stove. So I don't know. What do you guys do to avoid cross-contamination? Me, I'm just going to try to use the heat to kill the germs. All right, well, there's not much for you to see. I've got everything prepped. Pork roll is cooking. Um, once that's done, the eggs will go in. When they are flipped, I'll put the cheese on. And then at the last minute, I'll run the English muffins through for another cycle. And then we'll assemble the sandwich. Right now, you guys are uh, doing the culinary equivalent of watching paint dry. So, I'm going to turn the camera off. My uh, pork roll is browned. This is a little darker than I would have liked. This is a little lighter than I would have liked, but it's a happy medium. And I'm just going to blot the grease. Make sure this isn't stuck to the paper towel. And uh, that can just sit and wait for the uh, rest of the sandwich to be prepared. I'll cover it up to keep it warm. That's just sitting there cooling off. I got the burner off. And now I can start my eggs. All right, I got the pan on. I just turned the heat on a moment ago. I'll give it a quick whisk again. And in they go. Um, now, I like scrambled, but I also occasionally like uh, over easy, or a dippy egg as we refer to it. So, make it however you want. And I'm going to let those cook, and then when they're ready, I'll flip them and put the cheese on. And I'll show you a little trick. Uh, in the interest of utilizing my time, I'm just going to clean up this pan while I'm waiting for the eggs to cook. I have like leather gloves built in. I'm very calloused. Don't do stupid stuff like you see me do with hot food and hot pans. I'll reach in the oven and grab out something on tin foil. Um, that was making a lot of hot steam, but you can see no burns. Um, but that was still stupid of me. Um, getting back to the pork roll, um, I think I said this already, but anyone who I have talked into trying it has loved it. And, um, again, it is not bologna. A lot of people are like, oh, it looks like fried bologna. Nope. Um, I guess if I had to compare it to something, I would compare it to summer sausage, but it's really, it's not like that either. It's really its own thing. And um, given the opportunity, when I get Eggs Benedict, I will substitute pork roll for the Canadian bacon. And in my opinion, that makes a superior breakfast. So the eggs are cooking up. I think uh, in the interest of time, I'm just going to... Oh yeah, look at this. 
They're taking forever on top and they're burning on the bottom. Oh, I'm such a bad cook. I can't believe I'm doing a cooking segment when I have no cooking skills. But hey, bachelor's got to eat too, right? Somewhere out there, there's a chef having a heart attack. Somewhere out there, there's a non-chef who's made eggs before saying, why am I watching this idiot? And uh, let me tell you, that guy's onto something. Or a lady. <laughs> All right, so here's the trick I'm going to show you. So, these eggs are cooking at what I would say is probably approximately, I don't know, two to three hundred degrees. That's a real guess approximation there. But um, kindling takes place around 400 and change. So, I don't know if you ever saw anyone boil water in a paper cup or in plastic. Long story short, when these eggs are ready, I'm going to put the cheese on them. And then I'm going to cover them with the paper plate. I would recommend to you that you use porcelain or china or what have you. But uh, again, do as I say, not as I do. I am a professionally trained idiot. Okay. Flippy flip, raw side down. All right, here comes the cheese. And I think at this point, I'm gonna turn the heat off. Just cover this up. You can probably even take it off the heat. The heat that's in the pan will be enough to finish the cooking process. And I put my English muffin back in, in the toaster. Uh, just under halfway. That's my toaster, how my toaster works. I'm going to keep an eye on it, too. Um, this is also excellent on a on a roll, or a Kaiser roll, which is actually preferable, I think, because it gives you more room to hold the meat and the eggs. But uh, at home, an English muffin will do, and a sandwich-sized English muffin is even better. All right, I'm going to get um, ready for... Uh, assembly. I'm going to use ketchup and only ketchup. Uh, my preference is Heinz. Traditionally this is served with salt, pepper, and ketchup. Um, I'm also going to use a little pepper. In my opinion the salt and the pork roll, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, the ketchup and the pork roll are salty enough that I don't need salt. So I'm just going to do pepper and ketchup. But salt, pepper, and ketchup that's kind of like uh, or how you order a cheesesteak in Philly. You have to know your order. No one in Jersey will chase you out for not having your preferences ready. But <laughs> long story short, um, salt, pepper, ketchup on your pork roll, egg, and cheese. And then specify if you want, you know, fried egg or scrambled egg. And uh, you will get a delicious sandwich. All right. So let me see how these are doing. All right, that's nice and toasty. I'm going to put that down first. And then I like to do the pork roll second because I let it hang out over the edge. Can you see that? And that gives me um, more space to put the egg. Now, the egg could have used a little bit more time to melt the cheese, but that is done. And I'm going to very gently... Place that in the middle of the sandwich and get my supplemental residual egg. Get that on there too. Take that off the heat. I like a nice generous helping of ketchup.
fresh ground pepper. Hey, if you decide you want salt, put salt. You won't be alone. Maybe I'm just a weirdo. Top it all off. And there you go. One of many delicious New Jersey treats. I say it's right up there with uh, our pizza, our Italian food, our uh, uh, Italian hot dogs. I don't know if you ever had one of those. They're amazing. And there you go, folks. A nearly perfect pork, egg, and cheese. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.